Welcome to this meditation for stopping compulsive behaviors. Today I'm going to show you a practice that you can do to help reclaim your time and make more conscious decisions about what you want to do with it. Towards the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can apply this to your everyday life. So let's start by taking just one deep breath. And then just go ahead and get comfortable. And if you want, you can go ahead and close your eyes, though you don't have to. You can just keep them open, looking at the screen. I've got you covered there. So to ease into this practice, let's actually start by just turning our attention inward a little bit, noticing physical sensations, what you feel inside your body. Trying something you've probably never done in your life before. Let's actually focus our attention on the physical sensations that you feel inside your head. So whether it's like this pressure you feel, or maybe it's like this tightness in your head, whatever it is, just being aware of it and try keeping your attention here for a while. Noticing where your attention is in this moment. And if you notice you're thinking or you got caught up in thought, then great. This is actually one helpful thing to be aware of. I wonder if you noticed that when you were thinking, you actually even felt a sensation in your head. Maybe it was even before you were thinking, if you felt like this pull or urge to think, noticing what that feels like. So just continuing to notice the sensations in your head. Do you notice it feels a certain way to think? Or you notice a sensation when you feel the urge or that pull to think? Keep noticing. Now trying something a little different. First, getting comfortable. Now being completely still. So if you have like this itch that you have the urge to scratch, or you have this ache in your side that you want to adjust, get more comfortable, I invite you to see if you can just stay with that. Just notice it for a while without doing anything about it.
after taking some time to delay and taking that information just by being aware of yourself, using that information to then make a conscious choice, what do you want to do? If you want, you can continue to be completely still. Or if you want, keyword being want, you can go ahead and scratch that itch or make that adjustment. And all the while, just being mindful as you do it, it can help to do it slowly to help you to be more aware of it. So go ahead and do that, whatever you choose. Not only can you be aware of what it was like during, but also after. This time, doing all this on your own pace. So being completely still again and being mindful of what you're experiencing, then making a conscious choice what you want to do, and all the while being mindful of what you choose to do or not to do. And just noticing how you feel and relaxing your attention as you continue to rest here. What we can do to apply this to our everyday lives is number one, to just be aware of whenever you notice that pull or that urge to do something like check your phone. To build this muscle of self awareness, what you can do is this practice that we just did doing it more than just today. This will make it so it's easier for you to just naturally more quickly notice when it's happening in the moment. After being aware, step two is then making that conscious decision what you want to do next. With the keyword being want, not getting so caught up in what you think you should or should not do. The first step allows us to take in that important information to help you determine what you actually want. After being aware, making a conscious decision, what you want to do. Step three is to then do whatever you choose. And all the while, just being aware, being mindful of what that's like for you. Not just during, though, after. And even if you do that compulsion, this can be a learning experience for you if you're able to be aware of it. And what can really help with that is if you don't have to go through this harsh criticism of yourself where this wall of emotion might come up where there's this intense regret, disappointment, guilt, shame. When those things are present, we can be more likely to try to avoid our experience. If instead you can have self-compassion even just by telling yourself great job or a pat on the back, when you are successful at any of these steps, even if you do the compulsion, then more likely you'll be able to get that momentum to continue to do this and just stay more present in the moment. With this greater self-awareness, you may actually start to recognize that you don't like what you're doing with the compulsive behavior. And deep down, you make this decision that you don't want to continue. Bhante Gunaratana said that mindfulness gives you time. Time gives you choices. Choices skillfully made lead to freedom. You don't have to be swept away by your feelings.
you know, just noticing where your body rests against the chair, or the floor, or anything else. And gently moving your fingers, your toes, and then gently opening your eyes. If you're really serious about curbing your compulsive behaviors, then I challenge you for the next seven days, nearly every day, at least once a day, to do this practice that we just did. I left a link in the description below that'll take you straight to the guided portion of this video. Of course, some folks deal with more extreme cases of compulsions where obsessions may also be present, like in OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. What we did today is not any treatment for OCD or any mental illness for that matter. This is more for the more typical compulsive behaviors, like constantly checking our phone when we don't really want to. If you suspect that you might have OCD, then ask your healthcare provider about OCD and also a treatment called exposure and response prevention therapy, which many experts believe is the gold standard therapy for treating OCD. So I hope you enjoyed this meditation that we did today. And if so, I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, which will help you know when I put out a future meditation, helping you develop a life more peaceful and meaningful. So what are some things that you've already done in the past to help you stop compulsive behaviors? Just let me know in the comments below. The concept related to what we worked on today is that of non-reactivity. If you're the kind of person who wants to stay more even keeled or remain calm when life throws punches your way, watch this video right here where I guide a practice on just being more non-reactive. See you in the next video.